Hey guys, welcome to episode number 425. Today is Wednesday, so it's DIY Wednesday. And today I wanted to upgrade the three-stage carbon filter behind me so that I can add a second drip line to my turtle tank. As you guys probably know, my fish system is already on a drip line, and now I'm ready to add a drip line to my turtle tank. So the first thing we need to do is upgrade the flow through this unit, and then the second thing we need to do is add that second line so that we're getting drips into both systems. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right guys, so here we are at the three-stage carbon block system. As you can see, we have our cold water coming in here, and this is in the on position. It filters through a sediment filter, and then it filters through two carbon block filters before it exits this other side here. And the first thing it passes through is a flow restrictor. Now this is set to only allow 40 gallons per day to go through this unit. If this was not here, we'd be dumping hundreds and hundreds of gallons of water into our system every day. It would be super wasteful and all of these carbon block filters would basically get spent a heck of a lot faster than they would need to. Um, the slower the flow through these carbon block filters, the longer the life it's going to have. So what we have here is one line, this blue line, which is currently going to my freshwater um, aquarium system for my fish. This black line is actually uh, a quarter inch garden drip line that you can get from any hardware store. It's a little bit cheaper than the uh, shinier stuff that typically comes with a unit like this. It works just the same. And uh, I've run this to my turtle system. And so now what we need to do is switch this over so that we increase our flow and we also attach the second line. Pretty simple process, but the first thing we're gonna do here is just make sure that this system is shut off. So we've got that turned off there. So now water is not going to be flowing through this system. We'll probably get some drips uh, as we disconnect these lines, but that's just whatever water is in the line currently. All right, so if you guys don't know, these quick connects are really easy to deal with. Essentially, all you need to do is push on the little collet ring that's around it, and if you hold that back as you pull out, then those come out really, really easily. It's quick connect because you can just push that in firmly and then it's completely sealed, completely waterproof. You can see I'm pulling on it here and it's not gonna come out. But as long as you hold that ring back, you can pull that out and it's super, super easy to disconnect that. So what I'm gonna do is remove this flow restrictor here. This one was set for 40 gallons per day and uh, I'll keep that because it's a perfectly good uh, piece of equipment and uh, we we'll probably use it again at some point. And what I'm gonna do is replace it with this one here, which looks almost identical. It's just got a different flow rating. So this one, I believe, is 80 gallons per day. And um, I, I believe I picked that up at, at Gemco, but you can get it at basically any, any supplier that sells units like this. Um, again, quick connect. You see there's a direction of flow here. So we wanna make sure when we hook that up that the flow is going in that direction. It's very important. It will go on one way. And then what we're gonna do from there is split it. Um, so you can actually get fittings, quick connect fittings, like this that are a Y shape, um, which is a little bit better than the T shape um, because it's going to you know, not restrict the flow quite as much. When you go around a hard corner like that, uh, you tend to lose a little bit of flow and obviously the length of the, the pipe itself is going to cause more and more friction and slow that water down as well. So the less um, you know, times that you make it go through a hard uh, 90, the better. But um, for this, um, we just picked this up at our local hardware store. If you wanted to get a Y instead, you'd probably need to go to a specialty store. Uh, your big box stores are not gonna carry the Ys. But essentially what we did here was we just attached a small piece of that same tubing we're going to attach that there, just like that. And then all we're gonna do is take that first line, this was going to our fish system, and we'll connect that in. And it's nice 
to just push on those a little bit just to make sure they're completely seated. And then the last thing we need to do over here is just to take our drip line, cut that to size, and then feed that into the other end. Now I will probably make this look a little bit prettier at a later point, but functionally this is now operational and all I need to do is turn that back on uh, to get the water flowing. But let's go see where both of these lines are currently exiting so that you can get a sense for what's going on. All right, so the first line here goes to the fish system as we've talked about before. And if you follow that all the way down, you'll see it terminates down here with another shutoff valve. And this is just in case I want to increase flow or decrease flow to either one of these lines, or if I want to shut one off completely, if I'm working on the filters or some other project, I can just shut one of these off and let the other one continue to run um, just to give myself a little bit more flexibility down the line. So this is where one will start dripping here into the fish system as it has before. And let's go check out the turtle barrel. All right, and we're down here at the turtle system. And as you can see, I've run that quarter inch drain line along the wall. I actually decided to use um, Velcro and attach that to the wall in that fashion uh, because it's concrete and it just made it easy. And then what I did down here was I actually drilled a hole through the side of the barrel and I installed a quarter inch uniseal. It's kind of hard to see because it's so small, but there it is there. You can get uniseals in very small sizes and that allowed me to punch a hole through the side of this barrel. And then again, I've got a shutoff valve for that drip line. So um, here's actually one of those quarter inch uniseals. And uh, it's a 5 16 inch hole that needs to be drilled, and then you can slip that quarter inch uniseal in, you can push your drip line through that, and it creates that watertight seal. So that's what we're doing over here. Uh, let's go turn the water on and see what happens. All right, so we're back over here at the carbon block filter, and we're just gonna turn that back on all the way. And uh, the important thing to note here now is that water is traveling through both of those lines and because we've upgraded this flow restrictor, uh, it means that these carbon blocks are not going to last nearly as long uh, as they did in the past. So I've just doubled my flow, which means that the life of these is, is half or less, probably less than it was before. So I'm definitely gonna need to keep an eye on these and replace them when necessary. But now we've got water traveling through both lines. So let's go take a look at both of those dripping into their respective systems. And we're at the fish system. And as you can see, I've dialed this valve back partially so that it's partially closed so that we get a nice steady stream through this drip line, but that it's not blasting out 100% through this line. Because these two lines are different lengths, it means that there's going to be different pressures at the ends of both of these lines. And so that's where these valves come in really handy because I can fine tune this. If I was to open this all the way, the turtle line, since it's longer, wouldn't get anything. Zero water would flow through that line. But because I've dialed this back, we've got a nice steady stream in the fish system. And let's go check out what the turtle system looks like. All right, and as we can see, the turtle line has a nice steady stream as well. Now, please note that this one is completely open and uh, the other one is partially closed. So um, just by tweaking one or both of these valves, I can get the right um, flow rates through both of these lines to both of the systems. Now, um, you'll see I've got my two inch drain line there plumbed into the side of this filter barrel. So whatever water is dripping into this system, that same amount of water, minus evaporation, is going to be dripping out through that two inch drain line, which runs all the way along this wall over to my central 
sump system. So let's go take a look at where that line terminates. All right, so here's our two inch drain line. And as you can see, we have another two inch drain line. Both of these systems share the same drain line. And the water that's dripping into this barrel and the water that's dripping through this drain line from the turtle system, both of those are entering this third sump barrel. And as you can see, we've got water dripping very slowly into this barrel. The same amount of water that's dripping through both of those drain lines. And then we've got our sump pump there, which is currently activated. And that's pumping our wastewater out through the main drain line to the house. So that's the system. That's the upgrade. Pretty excited to now have the fish system and the turtle system hooked up to a drip line, which means I will technically never need to do water changes ever again because I'll be draining and filling 80 gallons per day through this drip system. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.